The basic instructions on how to install our 2024 mini mill uh, one horsepower turbo motor upgrade. First thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to strip your mill down, take the old motor off, take the old motor housing off, uh, any gears or anything that were on here, I don't have them anymore, take them off. You're going to want to be down to just a 30 millimeter shaft, measure your shaft, make sure it's 30 millimeters, if it's not the kit won't work. It also has the gears removed from the inside. To do that, you're going to want to take the whole thing off, press this out, remove this little shaft in here, remove the secondary gear. I couldn't get the little lever thing out of here. It was real tight, so I just took the knob off. This is our year model 2024 standard servo motor upgrade kit for the mini milling machine. Comes with the new controller, 7 amp thermal overload, reverse on the fly, e-stop, 10 RPM increments, top speed 4,500 on the motor, low speed 200. This is the motor, comes with the pulley already on it, drive belt. This is the belt cover. It's unique to the brackets because they're made individually at this time. This is the spindle drive. This is the spindle lock. It works like slides into here mounting hardware and then we have these little plugs these little plugs are actually made out of 28 millimeter metal chair leg plugs you can get them on amazon and you cut them down i'll explain how they work next there is also this spacer rests underneath the spindle drive when we have these mass produced it will be part of the spindle drive so this will become one piece. I usually start with assembly of the motor first. These are the parts you're gonna need. You're gonna need a long metric Allen. This is the top of the bracket. These are so you can fit this screw in after the fact. This is gonna be where this is gonna sit in here. And you're gonna want the wires going off this side. So there's lots of different things that can come up with that. I want the wires off on that side, so we're going to reverse the motor, and we're going to take this, and we're going to set it right there. And we'll put the first screw in. Don't tighten it. Now with this new easier to machine, easier to mass produce bracket, the belt's going to have to go in right away. So put the belt on there. Next put this one on in the same manner. So you can no longer get this pull in after the fact, so you have to put it in now. I can make this screw a little hard to get in, but I can usually manage. You might want to use needle nose or whatever works for you. Okay, make sure everything sits free like that. Snug the bolts down to just like that. Don't put any, any pressure on them yet. Check to make sure your lock fits in here. Notice there is a little bit of play. It's close, but you might have to adjust this. Movable, but it's tight. That's not tight enough yet. That's about right. Next, I'm going to remove this knob just to get it out of the way. You could probably do this by measuring, but I like to do hands-on. We're lining up these two bolts, so if you feel the need, measure it and set this space. Or, set this on there.
adjust the width of the two brackets so the bolts line up, square it off, and then tighten the motor bracket, like this. Remove the bracket. Before you go any further, check to make sure that your spindle lock fits. And it does fit, but it's a little tight. I went ahead and got the caliper out and I measured the screw holes here and I measured them on the milling machine and it's in the correct spot. What that means is this is too tight. When you put it all together, you're gonna have to grind the edge off in your grinder. So that it goes in easy and notice there might be a slight difference from one side to the other of the thickness of this grind it off the one that's a little thicker so we install this spacer and you're going to want it to be loose enough that you can slide it up and down because you may have to lift it back out of there at some point if it's too tight you're going to want to file it. So we're going to chew up the keyway a little bit. Shouldn't be much. top gear too tight but you can't have it too loose either if it's too loose it's going to be problematic because the motor has so much power that it can start twisting this back and forth on the keyway and make a rattling noise watch me break all the rules Thing is, it's hitting both sides. I also know I can get this off the spindle because there's a ledge I can get underneath it. So start with one on the front. Then do the other one on the other side. got a little travel. Okay, you want to do this with the belt loose. You want to put these back ones in because they're going to have to sneak in past the belt. You're probably going to have a little bit harder of a time doing that. If it gets lost in there, you might have to take it all apart to get it out. Make sure the belt's lined up on the back and on the front. Tighten up these two front ones first. Then the back. Okay, I showed you you already made one of these. This one's not made yet. If you're going to make your own, this is how you do it.
place that in there, push it up against the motor. Mark off where the fold is. Fold this on your metal brake so it's just past 90. That way when you push it in here, it puts a little spring tension on the bracket. Mark the holes so that you don't hit the other holes already here, which means in a little bit, about right here, and about here. And here's why. They're handmade. That's why they each only fit the one that it comes with. Draw them off nice and square, center punch them, drill them out one eighth inch drill bit. Put it up where you want it. Mark the holes. Drill them out. Careful you don't drill through the belt. It shouldn't hit. But look, just in case. Tap the holes, M4. lots of practice to do that by the way. Before I go any further I need to put this nut on. These are, most of these go counterclockwise to tighten rather than the other way. Find the lock spot and no I did not grind that lock. It works really good that way. It works okay that way. I'm gonna leave it. So, this is going to be really hard to get your wrench in. But, I was able to achieve it. Make sure you got clearance here. So that not rubs, which it's real close, you're going to have to take this off and thin that spacer just a smidge so that this can go down. So also I drilled these out to 1316 no to 1364 1316 would be that big. That way there's room for slight misalignment. Get the little four millimeter bolts that come with the kit. Screw this plate on. Generally, if I, generally at this point, I'm still fitting all of these to the machine before I ship them out. That means it should fit right away. Sure. That looks good. Next up is the control unit. Something you might want to consider is this control unit only has one side mounting bracket. There's nothing down here. Get yourself some of that alien tape, two-sided tape, put a piece right here, and it will compensate for that. We're only going to use one screw because this is a demo bench. So we're just going to put it up there like that. Plug it in and check it. Make sure it all works. plug it in. Power it up. Now, every motor is going to come preset for the machine you bought it for, except for it's always a good idea to check at least P17. P17 for 
one of our 750s is number nine. Let's go check it. And it is good. So click to select. Top speed right now is already set the top. Lower speed, lowest speed. Is number two? No, number one. It's already set. Break. Actually, acceleration is number six. It's on one. That's as low as it'll go. That's where we're gonna leave it for now because it's got reverse on the fly. Break is number eight. It's on zero. That's where we're gonna leave it because it's got reverse on the fly. Turn it on. And that's where we want it, right out of the box. Notice it's only reaching about 3,900 RPM. Yet the maximum stop speed is set at 45. We've exceeded what this particular motor wants to run. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to two, which is top speed. And we're gonna drop the top speed down. It was running 3,900. We're gonna drop it down to 4,000. And select now. Now it'll run 4,000, so I just picked up an extra 100 RPM by simply setting the stop point, the high RPM stop point, just above what this motor really wants to do. And you can maybe pick up another 100 if you try to run it faster than it wants to do. It's not going to. So, E-stop. Reverse. You may want to label these buttons with your own labels. I don't have them at this point in time. That's it. That kit's done. It's built. It's ready to go. I'm going to take it off, box it up, and I'm going to list it for somebody that wants it to buy it. Or you can look at some of those ways I did things and build your own. Uh, be aware that you're going to have to get the right drive. I will sell you a 16L050, which is the motor uh, synchronous pulley, because I bought, I've had them mass produced now, so I have a whole bunch of them. I won't sell you this other, I won't sell you this spindle pulley, because I have to make each one by hand, so it's not going to happen. 